Good morning, everyone. Nice to see you this morning. Uh, one of the great things about Zoom is if you miss the service, you can usually catch it online. So I had a look this week because I wasn't able to be there last Sunday. And uh, I was interested to see or to hear the last hymn, which took me back a long, long time ago. Dare to be a Daniel, dare to stand alone, dare to have a something or other. My memory's going. <laughs> uh, but it was, it took me back to something called, and some of you will remember this, the Band of Hope. And uh, I had a, where I lived in Longstone in Edinburgh, I had a band of hope round the corner in the Church of Scotland. And that was one of the hymns we used to sing reg regularly, Dare to be a Daniel. And uh, it's, it's amazing. Some of these old hymns were great because they told a Bible story as well. So you learnt the Bible story from singing the hymns as well. But this morning we're going to sing a song about strength. Where does our strength come from? And uh, Isaiah chapter 40 says this, Do you not know, have you not heard, the Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. Here's a great verse. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow weary, tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Let's sing together this morning. Strength will rise when we wait upon the Lord. finished quicker than I expected. Um, it, I don't know if you know who wrote that song, but there's two chaps called Brenton Brown and another chap called Ken Riley wrote uh, that song, Strength Will Rise. And I used to, he 
Ken Riley comes from Whitley Bay and I used to play golf with him regularly. That's my claim to fame today, is that I played golf with composer of one of their songs that we sung. The Baptist Union, as you'll probably know, have an assembly every year. And last year they did it online and it was called Canopy. And they're doing the same again this year, having the Baptist Assembly online and calling it Canopy. And if you want to attend any of the events that are happening on the 1st, 2nd or 3rd of, of uh, October, then you need to go to the website and register. Rona's just putting up on the screen just now the website with the details of the various seminars. On Friday night, it starts with a prayer gathering. And then on Saturday, uh, there's morning sessions. And uh, in the afternoon, there's various seminars taking place. So, if, And if you want to attend any of the events that are happening on the 1st, 2nd or 3rd of April, of uh, October, then you need to go to the website and register. Rona's just putting up on the screen just now the website with the details of the various seminars. On Friday night, it starts with a prayer gathering. And then on Saturday, uh, there's morning sessions. And uh, in the afternoon, there's various seminars taking place. So if you look on the website, um, just if you Google, if you know how to Google or do a search engine, and look for Baptist Union of Scotland Canopy. That's where it'll come, it'll come up to that. You'll be able to find that website. There's some of the speakers. Just go back again, Rona. There's some of the speakers, Simon Dennis, Ruth Valerio, and something's on my screen. I can't read the third one. Thank you. Yink oh, Yinka, yeah. So these are some of the folk who are taking part. And then there's Martin Link, Andy Harding, Andrew Flynn. So if you, if you want to take some time to look through that, but make sure and register. The tickets are all free, but the church, Gallish Hills Baptist Church, along with other churches, have made the donation towards the costs of running this event. So uh, we all get to go to these events free and you can tune in to anything you want to go to over that weekend. So, and we'll be joining together on the Sunday, the third, with Baptist churches across Scotland as we did last year and having a joint service at 10.30 on that Sunday morning. So put that in your diary and uh, try and plan to be there. That'd be great. Thank you, Rona. So we're going to spend a few minutes in prayer and Alistair is going to lead us in our prayers this morning. So it's over to you, Alistair. Let us pray. Lord, we need your help as we come to pray. There are so many distractions that sometimes, even as we seek to worship you, our thoughts drift to other issues which are on our minds. May a sense of your presence become real to us now. We've been singing about rising strength by which we are drawn into worship. Thank you that this happens when your Holy Spirit is active in our hearts and minds. We want to be real in your presence, Lord. So help us to be the type of worshippers who approach you in spirit and truth as our Heavenly Father desires. We begin by expressing our sincere gratitude to you, Father, for all your care and love expressed in so many different ways. Thank you, Lord, for the work of the Baptist Union of Scotland, which goes on apace, and for the opportunity given to the Baptist churches across the country to join in canopy with such a challenging theme of remaining in the vine. Teach us, dear Lord, to understand more clearly what Jesus meant by this idea of being grafted into him, our true vine. Help us now, Father, as we pray for one another, 
mourning with those who are sad and rejoicing with those who are glad. Hear our prayers offered in weakness, but made in your perfect strength. And in the words of an old hymn, we say, Speak, Lord, in the stillness, while we wait on thee. Hush our hearts to listen with expectancy. Amen. Thank you, Alistair, for leading our prayers this morning. I appreciate that very much. We're going to sing together a psalm which comes from Psalm 42. As the deer pants for the water, so my soul longs after you. Let's sing this lovely psalm together. desire of our hearts this day. 
Lord, you are the desire of all the nations. And so, Father, we gather here from many nations and, and many people, and we join our hearts together to say, Lord, that in everything we do this day, in every time we spend, in every thought we think, Lord, in every meditation that we are involved with, Lord, may it all be an act of worship to your great and glorious name. Blessed be your name, O God. Amen. A lovely hymn reminding us that we are to long after the Lord. He, he loves to hear us sing his praises. He loves to hear us pray. He wants to walk with us day by day. But do we long after him the way we should just now? The reading this morning is from Acts chapter 4, and Gavin is kindly going to read the passage for us this morning that uh, Andy Scarcliffe has chosen. And uh, so it's over to you, and, uh, Andy, Gavin. So Acts chapter 4, uh, verse 3. They seized Peter and John, and because it was evening, they put them in jail until the next day. And then from verse 23. On their release, Peter and John went back to their own people and reported all that the chief priests and the elders had said to them. When they heard this, they raised their voices together in prayer to God. Sovereign Lord, they said, you made the heavens and the earth and the sea and everything in them. You spoke by the Holy Spirit through the mouth of your servant, our father David. Why do the nations rage and the peoples plot in vain? The kings of the earth rise up and the rulers band together against the Lord and against his anointed one. Indeed, Herod and Pontius Pilate met together with the Gentiles and the people of Israel in this city to conspire against your holy servant Jesus, whom you appointed. They did what your power and will had decided beforehand should happen. Now, Lord, consider their threats and enable your servants to speak your word with great boldness. Stretch out your hand to heal and perform signs and wonders through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. After they prayed, the place where they were meeting was shaken and they all were filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God boldly. All the believers were one in heart and mind. No one claimed any of their possessions was their own, but they shared everything they had. With great power, the apostles continued to testify to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And God's grace was so powerfully at work in them all that there were no needy persons among them. For from time to time, those who owned land or houses sold them brought the money from the sales and put it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to anyone who had need. Joseph, a Levite from Cyprus, whom the apostles called Barnabas, which means son of encouragement, sold a field he owned and brought the money and put it at the apostles' feet. Amen. Thank you, Gavin, for reading this morning. And now uh, it's great to have Andy Scarcliffe with us virtually this morning. Um, he's re recorded a message for us. Uh, he's actually going to come in person in October to preach. I thought it'd be great if we were able to hear him live. So hopefully we're going to be back in the building in October and Andy will be with us then. Uh, but we've been so grateful to Andy for providing so many messages and sermons for us over these past year and a half or so. Um, Rona will just explain, there's been a bit of editing. Rona, just explain what's happening. It's just, in, if you see the picture, Jerk, don't worry, um, as they say, and uh, don't adjust your sets. Um, I think Andy's just done a couple of takes on a couple of bits. So that's all that is. Um, so um, just, just a kind of warning in case uh, you, you think something's gone wrong with your screen. It's not. Um, it's just the recording. Thank you. That's great. So very happy to be back with you here in Gala Shields this morning. At this very moment, I'm actually leading worship at Granton Baptist Church. And I foolishly said that 
um, or someone challenged me to to sing a worship song in the style of Tamla Motown because I'd posted something about the temptations and the dance moves uh, last week on Facebook. So I said I'll go I'll go uh, um, go one better and I will write some new words to uh, a Tamla Motown song. So people sent me all sorts of suggestions. Heard it through the grapevine, my girl. Um, people get ready. Um, and so, so on. I, at this stage, this is Monday morning. I'm not sure what I've chosen, but I'm thinking it was a stupid thing to do. All of that aside, <clears throat> I thought it would be good. We've, in, in recent weeks, we've talked about different kinds of churches, different challenges they have as we looked at the churches in Revelation. Um, and we talked about, we have talked from time to time about the challenges of, of post COVID world. And there's always the danger that we go back to business as usual, as I've said many times. And so we need to learn from all that we've done creatively. And we've done creative things because we had no choice. Churches don't easily do creative things. They don't easily take risks. They don't easily make mistakes in the on the road of learning what the right thing is. We're, we're too obsessed with getting absolutely right. We somehow think that God will be... Uh, displeased if we make any mistakes but of course we've had to you know muddle along in in a COVID world uh, with Zoom and with all sorts of other things had to think more creatively and I think the challenge is to to stay outside the box rather than go back into it the minute COVID ends and because we we always need to be learning the new way to do things I was reading the story of um, uh, Blockbuster Video you, you'll remember that going back uh, on, you know, going down on a Friday night, getting your popcorn from them or whatever, and buying a, a VHR, renting a VHS tape. And there was the devastating situation where you, you forgot to take it back or you went on holiday and you had to remortgage your house to pay the, the, the penalty for the, the overdue fees. And it was actually an experience like that that the the the, the creator of Netflix had you know he 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 had an overdue video from Blockbuster, and uh, he came up with this idea of <clears throat> using the internet for watching films. And he went to the CEO of Blockbuster one day and he said, "Look, I've got this idea. Would you be willing to partner with us?" <clears throat> and he was intrigued by the throughout the whole conversation. This CEO of Blockbuster seemed to have some strange facial expressions, and it wasn't until afterwards that he discovered that the CEO of Blockbuster was trying desperately hard not to burst out laughing because there was this young upstart suggesting that he should partner with Blockbuster, oh my goodness me, with the, the world leader in rental um, of films. And of course, as we know, Blockbuster is now, um, uh, what is it when you run out of money and you're um, bankrupt, that's right. Um, and, uh, it, uh, but, but, um, Netflix is seven billion worth something like seven billion dollars, maybe even more now, and and it's a it's a it's a salutary lesson that we meet, need to be willing to move with, and change with the culture, and you have a wonderful um, future ahead of you with a new pastor with a, a young head on his on his shoulders who will no doubt have lots of great ideas. And I thought it would be useful for us to think about a church, the church in Acts, in a particular experience they had in Acts chapter four. Um, and uh, they, they saw themselves, uh, they, 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 they were uh, again learning how uh, the importance of prayer as they came up against their challenges. Um, and, they, they had to learn what it meant in the face of their challenges um, to, to, to find God in the midst of that. And I was chatting to Andrew Rawlinson, who uh, recently, who was speaking a couple of weeks ago at the United Free Church Assembly. And he was talking about this whole thing about, you know, we've learned how to be creative and we've discovered new ways. He says, over these last 18 months, we've tasted fresh expressions of this freedom, free to experiment, free of the constraints of our buildings, free to be creative in mission, free to focus on relationships, not programs. But he was interestingly talking about the, 
um, the interface between fear and freedom, talking about the children of Israel coming out of Egypt into the promised land. And he said, yes, they had all this, they had all this freedom, but there were challenges and fears that came as a result of the new situation. So what are the key lessons that we learn from this passage in Acts chapter four? The first thing is, the first thing is they had to hit the right keyboard um, button. The first thing is that they had a passion to pray. On their release, Peter and John went back to their own people, reported all that the chief priest and the elders had said to them. When they heard this, they raised their voices together in prayer to God. So Peter and John have been released. They weren't pers they, they weren't whipped, they weren't scourged, they weren't crucified, which was a, a strong possibility in those days. They were released and they came back and they were rejoicing. And when the Christians heard Peter and John's report, did they hold a conference? Um, when they heard this, they raised their voices to God. They didn't hold a conference or discuss it or have an elders meeting. They recognized that prayer was fundamental, not supplemental. So they raised their voices together in prayer to God. In other words, they were facing the challenge, but they weren't paralyzed by fear. They go back to God. They had a passion to pray, just like Jacob at Peniel, I will not let you go unless you bless me, God. Abraham, as the promise has been given that he will be a blessing to all nations of the world, but God seems to be taking his time. He goes to God and he lays hold of him. And of course, Jesus in Gethsemane, as he sweated, as he sweat great drops of blood, and the, the darkness was darkness was overwhelming, coming over him. He says, Lord, not as I will, but as yours, uh, your will be done. Take this cup from me, but I'm willing to, to face the darkness. And so we would prefer it if we had a different cup in our hands. The darkness and the uncertainty and the cultural change and the, the, cultural, the culture that's so secular and dismissive of Christian things. We come to God and we say, and we raise our voices together in prayer to God, just like them. They had a passion to pray. So at Galashiels, I'm sure this, I don't have to tell you this, or maybe I do, that you need to go back to God and, and believe in prayer and say, Lord, do something here, a passion to pray. But the important thing also that they learned was, or that they had, was that they had a big God. I've been to more prayer meetings than I can number that were possibly the most boring hour or hour and a half I have ever experienced. And you may say, ah, but it's because of the warfare. It's because you're doing battle in prayer. No, no. It's because the prayer meetings were run in the most boring, unimaginative way ever. You'll end up with this, you know, shopping list of, oh, who's got something to pray about? And you'll pray for so-and-so who's gone into hospital, which was a good thing to pray for. Pray about this, pray about that. No one ever mentions anything that's going on in their own lives. Oh, my goodness me, that would be far too revealing. And so we come to prayer, but we go through the motions and we pray and the same people pray. And we don't do creative things that get the silent people praying. And as a result, prayer meetings can be the most deadly experience ever. Um, and I'm saying this as a pastor, and I always tried to do creative things to get people praying. I mean, one thing I used to do was say, right, who's got something to pray about? Oh, pray about Mrs. Johnson who's just gone into, how should we pray for her? What do you think she's dealing with just now? Well, I think she's likely feeling fear and she's feeling lonely and she's feeling this and she's feeling that. And I knew perfectly well that that person would not be praying for her loneliness or her, her, her peace. That, she, that person who's mentioned her in prayer will not pray because it's usually the two or three that pray. And then you're thinking, who is someone else going to pray? We've only been at this five minutes and we've got another hour to go, for goodness sake. And sometimes I would just get people, well, how would we pray about that? How should we pray about what we've seen in the news? Oh, well, I think we should pray about this. And I think we should pray that way. And often after half an hour to three quarters of an hour, I said, well, that's the prayer meeting over. And they would say, but we haven't prayed yet. And I said, well, God's been here. He's heard all of your requests expressed. You haven't been saying, oh, God, please help so-and-so. But you've been mentioning their needs 
that is essentially prayer. I used to try desperately to get, and this church comes to, to God and they've got a big God, sovereign Lord, you made the heavens and the earth and the sea and everything in them. So they see him as sovereign. This is no boring prayer meeting. This is a, a prayer, prayer to a big God who answers prayer. He's self-revealing, verse 25, you spoke by the Holy Spirit. So they're believing, I can imagine, that God is going to guide them. And as you come to pray about Gala Shields, you're coming to a God who is self-revealing. He's not some mute dignitary weighing into the, the corner of the universe. He's right there among you and he's self-revealing by your spirit, by the spirit. And so you should expect people to say, well, I think God's saying this and I think God's saying that. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is in each person's life. He is all seeing. Now, Lord, look upon their threats. He is all seeing. He sees everything that's going on in our lives. He sees everything that, um, that, that is threatening to you in your personal life. He sees everything that's threatened to you in Gala Shields. And so he is a God who, who answers and does the impossible. Jeremiah says, I am the Lord, the God of all mankind. Is anything too hard for me? Can I get an amen to that? I know you're all muted on Zoom, but I, if I see, well, I can't see because it's a video. Yeah. But if I were to be doing this live, I hope I would see your mouths mouthing an amen and a hallelujah. And I might even see you dancing around your kitchen. He does the impossible. Jesus said in Matthew 17, 20, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move from here to there and it will move. Can I hear an amen to that as well? Nothing will be impossible for you. So the challenges you face as you go into the future with this new pastor, God is saying nothing will be impossible as you step out in faith. Wonderful story about Alexander the Great. A man came to him one day and asked for dowry money for his daughter's hand, who presumably was getting married to Alexander. And Alexander said, I don't deal with the money. Go and speak to my treasurer. And uh, the treasurer was similar to lots of church treasures because when the guy said, I want this amount, he was shocked. I didn't even ask for a receipt. He just said, oh, I'm not authorized to give that amount. It was a huge amount the guy was asking for. And he says, I'm going to have to go and ask Alexander to get authorization for this. And he goes back to Alexander and says, I can't give him this much. And Alexander said this, let him have it all. I like that fellow. He does me honor. He treats me like a king and proves by what he asks that he believes me to be both rich and generous. Alexander was affirmed by the amount that he was asking. And God is there in heaven saying, how much are you really going to ask? How much do you believe I can do? Why do you ask for such a pittance when I, I own the cattle on a thousand hills? When I own everything, why not ask? Why do you not have a big God? So they had a big God. The third thing was availability availability which is important well it's not just important it's crucial now lord they've prayed they believe god does wonderful things enable your servants to speak your word with great boldness oh my goodness me this is a situation of persecution this is a situation where they could lose their lives if they do this stuff um about jesus but they're saying, enable your servants to speak your word with great boldness. They're not passing the buck to God and saying, right, God, do some miracles and we'll hide away in this in this little room and we'll, we'll go out when the revival takes place. No, no. Enable your servants to speak your word with great boldness. Their, their leaders have just been in prison, risking their lives. Surely they'd be saying, no, 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 Lord. Um, they, they don't pray, grant that we may be kept safe. That's the kind of prayer we would pray. They don't pray, grant that Peter and John may be protected. They don't pray, Lord, don't let this happen again. They pray, Lord, help us get on with the job of proclaiming the gospel. There's the quotation from Tozer, which I think I shared a couple of weeks ago when I was preaching on Acts 
no, what is it? Psalm 80. Have you noticed how much praying for revival has been going on of late and how little revival has resulted? I believe the problem is that we have been trying to substitute praying for obeying and it simply will not work. Prayer will become effective when we stop using it as a substitute for obedience. These guys weren't using prayer as a substitute for obedience. They were praying that miracles would happen, but they were also saying, Lord, we're available and we're willing to, willing to do this stuff in your name. There was availability. Third thing, no, fourth thing, five points this morning. My goodness me, I'm not gonna charge you any extra, but the extra two points. Faith for miracles, verse 30, stretch out your hand to heal and perform signs and wonders through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. Hallelujah. A faith for miracles. You see, you can have a passion to pray, but have a small God. And you go to that God and you have these tiny wee prayers. No, you can have a big God. But you can go to that big God and not be specific enough. What do you want me to do? Jesus said to the man at the pool of Bethesda. What do you want me to do? Oh, well, isn't it obvious, Jesus? Well, no, I want you to state it in faith. What do you want me to do? And they, and they, they specifically say, stretch out your hand to heal and perform signs and wonders through the name of your holy servant Jesus. There was a faith for specific miracles and God honours it. Verse 31, after they prayed, the place that where they were meeting was shaken and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God boldly and then had a sip of coffee to keep them going. So verse 31, after they prayed, the place was shaken. I love that story a few chapters further on i mean they're still dealing with the challenges and you've got peter who had been in prison and an angel sets him free i mean these miracles that they're praying for they start happening in verse in chapter 12 um, and an angel turns up and the angel said to him put on your clothes and sandals and if it would be a mother angel she would have said that and, and put on some clean underwear and and peter did so make sure you've got clean underwear on you're going out into out of the prison and peter did so wrap your cloak wrap your cloak around you and follow me i love the practicality make sure you get your shoes and your cloak you know and peter followed him out of the prison but he had no idea that what the angel was doing was really happening he thought he was seeing a vision and then he goes down to where the Christians are meeting, knocks on the door and Rhoda looks out through a wee peak hole to check who it was and runs into the room, doesn't open the door, checks out who it was. It's Peter. He's out there. He's outside the door and the church all say, you're out of your mind, they told her. I think that's wonderful because they pray for miracles to happen and miracles happen. Peter's set free by an angel who ex explained them, put your shoes on, put your cloak on and, you know, walk close to me and so on. Very practical, miracle taking place. And when it happened, you see the, the church are praying for his release and he's released. Oh, no, 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 he can't have been released. But Stop, it's, you know, that must be a vision or you must have been mistaken. Come back in and, and continue to pray with us that Peter will be released don't you hear what i'm saying he's been released while we're praying and that's i love that god in his mercy his grace says i want to give you miracles will you trust me for them warren buffett he's one of i think he's the fourth richest man in the world he's worth uh, an estimated 44 billion dollars incredible he he does projects with and and initiatives and warren buffett oh, worth 44 billion dollars and his initiative his initiatives going with bill gates um, their plan is to eradicate malaria from africa you know it's a big a big plan and he's got all this money and that's what he does with it and he, there was one occasion when he was he was uh um wanting to make some extra money for his one of his charity uh, uh, foundations and um he decided to auction online an evening with warren buffett i don't know whether it was ebay where it was 
um, but he auctioned online an evening and a, a lovely meal with Warren Buffett. And, uh, and people bid for it and they knew that they would be able to sit with this great man, this great business person, this entrepreneur, this man who had made large amounts of money, get his wisdom, um, get his advice, get his guidance, have a lovely meal at the same time. The winning bid was $300,000. In fact, it was 350000 Well, actually, it was $351,100, the winner, an expensive meal. And I, I just I reflected on that, and I, I thought to myself, you know, when we're talking about a God who works miracles, a big God, who gives us his ear. He never says, sorry, I'm too busy, come back tomorrow. And I think because of that, we take him for granted. We pray and trust and have faith for very little, even though he's waiting for us just to ask. He's bigger, he's richer than Warren Buffett. And we don't have to pay anything to spend an evening with him and he wants to work miracles for us. Um, we need to have a faith for the miracle to happen. Passion to pray, a big God. Oh, I've lost my, there it goes. Faith for miracles and lastly, changed lives. God's grace was so powerfully at work in them all. Verse 33, God's grace was so perfectly and that caused changed lives. There was a grace of unity. Verse 32, all the believers were one in heart and mind. There was a grace of renunciation. No one claimed that any of their possessions was their own. Grace of fellowship, verse 32, they shared everything they had. The grace of liberality, verse 34, there were no needy persons among them. From, from time to time, those who owned land or houses sold them, brought the money from the sales and put it at the apostles' feet and it was distributed to anyone who had need. Incredible. Um, changed lives. These people's lives were transformed and the people that were added to the church, they were transformed in the same way. And so I suppose as Gala Shields looks into the future with a new person uh, in leadership. That is so exciting. For goodness sake, give him permission to take risks. For goodness sake, allow him to think outside the box. For goodness sake, allow him to lead you into risky areas. And dare I say it, allow him to make some mistakes because it's only when we make mistakes that we then learn how to actually do the stuff. If we're going to stay within the box of the predictable and the what we have done before, well, maybe we'll never discover the miracles that God has laid up for us. Have we got a faith to believe that God can do the miracle, the miraculous, when we pray to him? Larry King, um, the TV presenter and journalist, I don't know, talk, he tells the story about these farmers who were struggling with the fact that there was a drought and their crops had not been uh, received any watering, any rain for months. And their crops were dying off and the livestock were needing water and, and they were dying off and they decided to pray to God. And they decided to pray every morning in, the, in, the, in their, one of their fields, uh, crying out to God that he would, he would answer and he would send rain. And after a few days, there was a, a, a chap walking past this field and he stops and is intrigued. He says, what is it you're doing? And they say, oh, we're praying to God that he will send rain. We believe that God can do it and we're crying out to him. We desperately need a miracle to take place. And the man thinks for a minute, he says, well, it ain't going to happen. Um, and they said, well, we're praying to God. God can do the miraculous and so on. And this man said, well, do you believe that God will do the miraculous? Well, we believe he can. We're crying out to him. He said, well, and he said one question and he walked on. He said, where are your umbrellas? And he walked on. In other words, now, OK, that's a, maybe an overstatement, but there's a truth in it. How ready are we? for God to do the miracle. Where are our umbrellas? 
as you pray, where are, where's your expectation? Have you got structures in the church, structures for, for, for growing new Christians, structures for reaching the community, structures for when people start coming to faith in Christ, there is something. Are, are, are your relationships good in the church? Do, are people welcoming? Are people open as new people come in? Do you speak to the new person? I'll have to say to you, that was something I struggled with in all four of my churches. Sometimes the fellowship was so good that when people came on a Sunday morning, they were part of a club and it was exclusive. And I would see one person over there, one person over there, there for the first time, and no one was even attempting to speak to them. Why? Well, because they were, they were enjoying fellowship. But here was a new person. They'd been praying on Wednesday that new people would come. A new person comes on Sunday and no one speaks to them. And so are we expectant and ready for the miracles when they take place? And I'm saying this to myself as well, as I go preaching, as I write songs um, to Motown tunes, am I expecting God to bless in some way? Let's pray that God will give us hearts that are passionate to pray, that see God as a big God, that are available to work for him with faith for miracles, and with an expectation of changed lives. Thank you, Rona. And we're, we're so blessed, aren't we, to have had Andy so many times speaking to us. And it's always challenging when Andy shares a message with us. Um, I wonder what we're praying for just now. And are we praying expectantly? Next Sunday, we have the pleasure of Andrew Rawlinson's company, who'll be with us live. And also, we hope to have communion uh, next Sunday in, in the service as well. But let's finish with a song which certainly I've not sung for a long time. It says, Here I am, wholly available. One of the verses says, The fields are white unto harvest, but oh, the labourers are so few. I wonder if we're ready and willing to do our part, whatever that may be, whether small or large, are we ready to do our part for God as we enter this new chapter in the life of Gala Shields Baptist Church? Let's sing together. Let's sing it as a prayer and sing it as, only if we mean it. Here I am, wholly available. To be 
counted in his glorious victory. Let's pray together. Lord, we ask that as we've sung these words, they may not be just words that come from our lips, but words that come from our hearts, that there may be a willingness to do our part in the service of your kingdom. Guide us, we ask. Direct us. May we be a prayerful people looking for amazing things to happen because you're a God who does not change. Just you're the same yesterday, today and forever. Just as you perform miracles in the past in scriptures that we read, you're the same God today that can perform amazing miracles. And so Lord, we commit your church back into your hands. Forgive us for the times we've taken over. Forgive us for the times that we've used our own intellect rather than trusting in you. Help us to look to you as we enter this new chapter. We pray for you and Beth once again and ask that you would guide and direct them and that, that everything would go according to your perfect plan. And we ask that as we look to the future, that you would build your church that you'd give strength to the weary once again, and that you'd enable us to do your work in making the gospel known to the people of Galish Hills and across the borders. So thank you, Lord, for being with us this day. And we pray, Lord, that you'd be with us this week. Give us opportunities to share our faith with others and give us boldness to speak your words that we may reflect the love of Jesus in both words and action, that we may as a church and as individuals have an impact on this community. And we ask and pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs>